Welcome to another video. We have another system of equations here, and it's different from what we've done before, but we're still going to solve it. So we have x squared plus yz equals 1, or yz, depending on where you're from, y squared minus xz equals 0, and z squared plus xy equals 1. And we're supposed to find all sets x, y, z of real numbers. So, as usual, it is okay if you stop watching now and try the problem yourself. And if you get stuck, come back. Or if you get the answer, just come see how I did it. If I got it right. Let's get into the video. So this is how I'm going to solve it. My strategy is to consider the first and the third equations. They look quite similar. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say because this is equal to 1 and this also is equal to 1, it means these two must be equal to each other and that's what I did. So I just said that that x squared plus yz is equal to z squared plus xy because they're both equal to one. And with that, I can move, actually I can move everything here. So I have, oh, I could have just subtracted. Okay, that's what I should have done. X squared, um, I could have subtracted this equation from this. So I have X squared minus Z squared plus YZ minus XY will be equal to zero. And I can factor, if I factor this, actually x squared minus z squared can be written as x minus z times x plus z. And this can be written as plus y times, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, I can actually write this as minus here and make this x minus z, so everything is the same. So I'll rewrite this. Okay, so everything is the same. So based on what I have, I can factor out x minus z. So if I factor out x minus z, what do I have? x minus z. And what's gonna be left will be x plus z minus y. Interesting, okay equals zero. So what I have is x minus z times x plus z minus y is equal to zero. Interesting. So now I have the product. Remember the zero product property means when two things multiply to give you zero, it is either this is zero or this is zero. So we're gonna have two cases. So the first case, case one, case one is that x minus z is equal to zero. And what does that imply? x equals z. Hmm. Okay, so this is the first case. We're gonna have a case where x is equal to z. We have to go and check everything we just found here. So let's go back to the original equation and find the situation. Let's go here. So let's call this equation one, two, okay, equation two. Okay, so from equation two, we know that y squared minus xz is equal to zero. If x is equal to z, it means we can write this as x squared because it's x times x since x is equal to z. So that would imply, uh, implies y squared minus x squared equals zero. And what does this mean? This means x equals y or x equals minus y. Okay, they have to be either equal to the, uh, each other or the signs are just different. You know, we can say that y squared equals x squared, which implies y will be equal to plus or minus x. That's it. Plus or minus y equals plus or minus x if you take the square root of both sides. Okay, now, so remember the claim 
we're saying when x is equal to z, x is y equals x or y equals minus x. Just one sign is going to be different. But one thing we know is x and z will be the same. So this means that if x equals z and y equals x, it means that x, x, x is a solution. This means that x, 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 or if we take the option of a negative, x, y will be negative x, negative x, and x, because x and z have to be the same, okay, um, is a solution. Now, we just need to go check, okay? So, now it doesn't matter what we're having now. This is just how I'm seeing it. So the solution are x is equal to y equals z or x equals z and that's equal to negative y. So let's test that. Let's just test it on any of these three equations because if any of these conditions satisfies um, these three equations, all three of them, then we're good. So let's just test. I'm just going to test. Let's put, let's take the first one. This is x squared plus, we said x equals this and this, so x squared plus x squared, what is it going to be? Um, x squared plus x squared is going to be 2x squared, so 2x squared equals 1. Huh, okay, let's go. So, let's plug it in. x squared plus x times x, which is going to be x squared equals 1, implies... Um, 2x squared equals 1, which means x will be equal to plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. That is the square root of 1 half, so it's plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. So we found x, which means that the solution we're going to be getting is going to be either 1 over rad 2, 1 over rad 2, 1 over rad 2, or minus 1 over rad 2, minus 1 over rad 2, minus 1 over rad 2. We just need to test it. Okay. And if this doesn't work, we switch to this one and see if it works. Okay. So let's just test this quickly. So if x, so then 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2 is a, is a solution with a question mark, okay? I need to go test it. So let's plug in 1 over square root of 2 here. 1 over square root, or square root of half. What is square root of half squared? That's 1 half. 1 half plus, this is going to be 1 half too. 1 half plus 1 half equals 1. Perfect. This is going to be the same thing. 1 half minus 1 half equals 0. Perfect. This and this are exactly the same thing. So it looks like this is a valid solution. Okay, now let's try the negative version of it. If we have this to be negative 1 half squared, it's going to be negative square root of 1 half squared. Oh, or, okay, is a solution. Okay. If I do the same thing, negative 1 over square root of 2 satisfies this. If you do the same thing, this is going to be 1 half plus 1 half, 1. 1 half minus 1 half, 0. The same thing. So these two, this is actually true. Okay. Now we need to check this one out. We want a situation where x and z are the same, but y is the negative of x. So we're going to go test it in where? Let's try it here. So here we're going to have, we said this is negative of x, so we have negative x squared minus x and z are the same, minus x squared equals 0. So this gives us x squared minus x squared equals 0. Okay, it works. It works for the middle equation, which is the one I think I want to test first. Now let's go to the first equation, or maybe the third one, it doesn't matter. So we said, remember we said, z and x are the same. So we have x squared 
plus yz, but we said y is negative x. So we're going to have x squared plus, what is y? Negative x times x squared. Yeah, equals 1. This is 0. This is 1. So it is not true. So that means this is not a solution because it didn't, it didn't work for this equation. We, we can, this doesn't make sense. This made, made sense, but this doesn't help us because 0 equals 1 is what it gives us, so we cannot use this claim. Remember that these two claims came from the fact that we solved just this part. We still need to go solve this part in case there's a nice solution that shows up. Remember that as soon as you find one of the equations giving you something nonsensical, you don't have to do any other work. You just have to walk away from it, okay? And that's what I discovered when I tried to solve this. So let's go here. So suppose that x, now case two, we have x plus z minus y is equal to zero. Is it possible for x plus z minus y to be equal to zero? Well, from here, we can see this implies that y is equal to x plus z. So what we're going to do is we're going to go plug it in somewhere here. So from equation 2, from equation 2, we know that y squared is going to be x plus z squared, x plus z squared minus xz is equal to zero. So now, you, is, it, is this possible? That's the only question. Is it possible that the square of a sum, the square of a sum, is it ever possible that the square of a sum is equal to the product? Think of, okay, that never happens. Let me find a way to show this here. So let's distribute this. This is going to give us x squared plus 2xz plus z squared minus xz. Okay? I have to clean up the board because I needed to show why this one will not give us any valid answer. It's a little bit technical and I needed more space. So I've copied the answers to this part of the board and let's finish this up. If we clean this up, we have x squared. So we have 2xz minus xz. So we have plus z squared plus xz is equal to 0. So this equation is naturally not valid for real numbers. Now I just want to show you, let's paint a better picture of it. want to show th that for all reals, x squared plus z squared plus xz is never equal to zero. Because once we can show it for this, then it means we don't need to care about it. The answer will not be real. And we're looking for real solutions. So how do we show this? Well, I'm going to move this over to this side and say x squared plus z squared equals negative xz. Right? Firstly, let's ignore this minus. If x and z have the same sign, say they have, um, they're both positive or they're both negative, then the right-hand side will be negative, the left-hand side will be positive. Fundamental theorem of, of arithmetic says that is impossible. You can have a, a positive number being equal to a negative number. So this will never happen if x and z are both positive or if they're both negative. So we just say not true if x, z are both greater than zero. By the way, they're not equal to zero because if x and z are each equal to zero, this equation will be true, but this will not be true because zero plus zero will not give you one. 
So that's why we're not considering the case of them being equal to zero. So now I know this is not true. If x or z is greater than zero, this equation will not be valid. Okay, so the only time this may happen or be valid is if one of these two is negative. So now let's assume that, assuming, assume x is less than zero, that means minus times minus will give us a plus, and this is positive, okay, and z is positive. We're gonna have x squared plus z squared is equal to a positive, we're gonna call it xz, okay? Suppose x was a negative number, okay, in this case. So that minus will cancel the minus coming from the x, and this is what you have. But let's put a question mark on it. Is this true? Not true since by the arithmetic mean, geometric mean inequality, x squared plus z squared is greater than or equal to 2xz. So you even need to multiply this right hand side by 2 for you to, even, to, to assume or to even expect to have an equality between this and this. So the fact that this is already divided by 2, it can never be equal to this. It is less than it. So this is greater than this and therefore this equality is not valid. Okay. That's it. So no other solution can be obtained other than this and this, which I already copied here. Every other thing I tried did not give me any possibility. Therefore, the only solutions Leave a comment in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.